Hello, welcome to Elshadai Christian Ministries. We love that you are here with us today, and we thank you for joining us here on our live. We are here to give God honor, glory, and praise, for he alone is worthy to be praised. Yes. We're here to reverence his name, hallelujah. It's not about what we can get, it's about what we can give, hallelujah. Yeah. Because when we pour out, he pours in. Come on, somebody. I said, when, he, when, ooh, when we pour out, he pours in. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Bless God. So we're here today to worship together as a family. If you're new to the live, welcome to the family. Hallelujah. We are a community of believers, God-fearing people. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we believe that he is the only one that matters. Woo. And as we surrender to him, he lifts us up. And he creates us and he helps us be who he created us to be. And he makes us new. Ooh, Jesus. We thank God that today he's mending broken hearts. He said in the captives free, he's removing the yoke of bondage. And whom the son sets free is free indeed. We worship you today, God. Give you glory, honor, and praise. We are here to worship. And when we sing, we don't have the rights to any of the music that we're singing. We're singing together in love. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for the people that wrote these songs. Hallelujah. Because yes. they continue to bless our hearts. So we welcome you to sing with us today. Let's get it. Yeah. 
that your grace and mercy brought me through. Mm. Yes. I'm living this moment because of you. Yes. Uh, I want to praise and thank you. Too. Thank you. Jesus. I'm living this moment because of you. Just put it in the chat, because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus. He's so good, y'all. He's so good. So good. He's better than good. He's the best thing that's ever happened to me. The best thing that's ever happened to me. Whew, I feel his presence in this place. Hallelujah. And I thank God because I know his presence isn't restricted to a building, so I know it's in your home right now. Hallelujah. When you let him in, he comes on in. Come on. He is comfortable. Say, God, take your shoes off. Take your shoes. Kick your feet back. Stay a while. <laughs> Stay a while. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I won't be before you long. I'm going to give you what God said to say. I'm going to wrap it up. Father God, I love you. I thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to be your vessel, Lord God, for these your children, Lord. I understand that I'm a conduit, Father God. It comes through me, to me, and to them, Lord God. Lord God, there's no filter here. What you give me, I give to them. And I thank you for being the servant. I thank you, Father God, for the spirit of humility. Yes. Right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you, Father God, that you're breaking down stronghold right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, binding up pride right now. You've already ready the ground, Father God, that people may be able to receive what thus saith the Lord. So today, even now, God, Thank you for your changing lives. Thank you for how you're making all things new. Yes, yes, yes. 
Thank you for our new heart and our new spirit. Thank, thank you, Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We appreciate you so much, God. Mm. I decrease in myself that I might increase in you. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Most importantly, get your glory. Yes, in Jesus' name, I pray. Thank God, amen. amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're starting something new today. But it's new, but it's old. I know that don't really make sense, but we're going to get there. All right. So, we talked about back to basics. Amen? So, we're coming back to the basics. And what we wanted to do is the series that we're, we're going to go into is called Do the Do's. Yes. Amen. Do the do's. We talked about this before. Jesus would have never had to come if the people that were taught the word and that were given the authority to present the word to the people did it right. Amen. But they didn't. Because what they did was they forced the law down their throats. And a lot of people just had the mindset, well, if I'm going to sin anyway, what's the point? I'm focused on what not to do, and inadvertently, when I focus on what not to do, it's what I'm focusing on. Oh, come, come on, on, somebody. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. So if I focus on what not to do, eventually I'm going to end up doing it because that's all I'm focusing on. Amen. Oh, that's right. So Jesus is saying, skirt, let me flip the script, I'm coming down. And I'm going to tell you what to focus on the things to do. Amen. 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 And when you focus on these things you need to do, you'll already take care of the things you won't need to do. Amen. Do the do's. Step one, love, love, love. If you're writing a title down, yeah, I know it's an old school song. That's my jam, by the way. The sermon title is Love, Love, Love. And the Holy Spirit gave me a revelation because a lot of times we say love God, love people. God said, it's a trifecta. Mm -hmm. okay. Love God, love yourself as you love people. Come on with it. That's uh -huh. good. Uh -huh. good. That's what good. are you talking about? Uh -huh. That's not in there. Let's go to the book. <laughs> Let's go to the book. Amen. All right? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew 22. Yeah. 37 through 40. Come on. Oh, Come on. And this is going to be the scripture for the series Do the Do's. This is going to be the foundation of scripture right here. Come on. And it says, and Jesus replied to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart uh -huh. and with all your soul gotcha. and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. If God says first and greatest in the same sentence, mm. it's important. Amen. Yeah. That's right. Amen. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Ha, there it is. That is unselfishly seek the best or higher good for others. The whole law and the writings of the prophets depend on these two commandments. So the reason why I say it's a trifold, because the second two, which is the second commandment, go hand in hand. What does that mean? That means you can't love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. All right. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. God is not a confusing God. That's right. Today, love, 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 we're going to stick a pin in 37 and 38. Because if we can't love God, we'll never get to the name. Come on, please. Amen. Amen. We got to start somewhere. And the start of this is loving God. But not just any kind of love. It specifically states, with all your heart yes. and with all your soul mm -hmm. and with all your mind. That's some love, y'all. That's some love. He didn't leave none now. <laughs> Let's break this down. The heart is the central or innermost part of something. Amen. So for us, 
The heart is the central or innermost part of our being. Yes, thank you. There you go. There you go. So that means with everything you got, we got to love them with everything we have. Everything. I don't even think we love anybody ever with everything we have. Mm -hmm. Why? Because our experience is in love. I got to leave myself a way out. So my heart won't be broken again. I know, I know, some of y'all ain't gonna admit it, but I've been there before when my heart got broken. I ain't dating nobody. <laughs> I'm gonna be celibate. I'm gonna become one of them folks that just, hallelujah, I'm, I'm for God. Leave the other factors out of it. Mm -hmm. One of those folks that be in the mountains. And <laughs> Bless you. And I'm one, I'm one with nature. <laughs> you know, but, I, what I had to come to the realization is if you don't give it all you got, well, it doesn't work. Thank you. Amen. 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 Because trust, come on, somebody, right. and faith requires everything we have. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's good. So that's the heart. The soul consists of the mind, the will, and the emotions. Yeah. So he said, just in case you didn't get it with the heart, we're going to move it on to another level. The mind, the will, and the emotions. So that means I want your mind to love me mm -hmm. with all your mind. Mm. Even the things in the back that nobody knows about, you think nobody knows about it, but I know it all. Well. I mean, God is the epitome. I can read your mind. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, <laughs> okay? Just because you didn't say it, I know what you're thinking, okay? And God wants us, through our love for him, to think godly thoughts. Amen? Amen? Well, that's hard. How can I do that? Not just your mind, your will. That will. Mm -hmm. There's something about our will, and the will battles the flesh. Yes, amen. Constantly. It battles the flesh constantly. Well, what do you mean, my will? Well, I believe Jesus said the best one said, not my will, God, but thy will be done. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a flesh thing that we have to constantly battle. I want to love God with all my will. Uh -huh. I want a will to love God. Yes. 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 Everything in me wants to love God. In uh -huh. our emotions, all oh, those emotions. <sighs> Sometimes you feel like a nut. <laughs> Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel saved. Mm. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you feel loving. Then somebody cuts you off. Sometimes you don't. What? But God says, I want it all. I don't want you to leave anything out or anything on the table. This is some serious love we're talking about here. And the last thing, the mind. Wait a minute, you don't need to say that already. In a human or other conscious being, the mind is the element, part, substance, or process that reasons, thinks, feels, wills, mm -hmm. perceives, and judges. The mind. The mind. I would even venture to say, and I remember when I was praying about this situation, because I said, God, what's what's the most important? The heart is the mind. He said, if you don't control your mind, mm. your heart is doomed. Ooh. Ooh. Because the mind is the garden. Mm. Mm. You plant seeds in your mind. And those seeds will grow yeah. into your heart. Yes. And once they grow into your heart, guess what? It comes out your mouth. Mm. Wow, there you go. Mm -hmm. That's so good. <laughs> Wait a minute. We just we just talked about this, didn't we? In the soul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what are we putting in our minds? And let me give you a nugget here that I got from Joyce Myers in her book Battlefield of the Mind. Every thought that comes into your mind, you do not have to accept. Right. 
Amen. Because thoughts are seeds. Yes. And you determine in your garden. Mm. Come on. Which seeds are planted. Yeah. All right. And without love, everything that comes in gets to grow. Uh-oh. Mm. This is why we must learn to love our God with all of our heart, our soul, and our mind. Here's the deal. To love at this level, we must develop a relationship with God. What you talking about love? I don't even know who this God is. That may be true. But in order to love at that level, the level we're talking about loving, with everything you got, we got to get to know. You know, I heard of this thing called arranged marriages. Some people have customs and they do those things. I thank God that this relationship is not an arranged marriage. Because God is commanding us to do something. Which means we have a free will. There's that will again, man. We can't get away from the will, can we? So, Pastor Miguel, what are you talking about? How do I will to love somebody I don't even know? You get to know him. You get to know him. Amen. To love God with all our heart, soul, and mind, we must first get to know him and receive the love he has for us. This is amazing. He's commanding us to love, but he loved us first. If you're looking at this in a natural, it makes no sense. Yeah. How can you love me when I don't even love you? When I don't even know who you are, but yet you still love me? He loved us first. He said, I'm not just going to command you to do something. I'm going to start this thing in motion. Well, how did he love us first? What are you talking about? Well, I'm glad you asked because the Bible says in John 3, 16, for God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave his one and only begotten son so that whoever, somebody says, that be me. That be me. Believes and trusts in him as Savior shall not perish but have eternal life. For God so loved the world. So loved. That means he started this love thing. He gave his son for me? I'm, I'm not worthy of that. Evidently you are. If he did it. He did it so he can be worthy. He said, I'm going to love you so much. And when you learn about this love I have for you, you can't help but love me back. Mm -hmm. The problem is we're unlearned. There you go. How do I learn about this love? Well, John 3.16 is in this book we call the Bible. So, this is how we learn about this love. Yeah. Specifically speaking, the love of Jesus. Amen? Amen? So, if we understand that God loved us so much that he sacrificed his life for us, and even though it may be confusing, we may not understand why he did what he did, uh -huh. we don't have to understand to receive it. Yeah. Isn't that a blessing? Yes. Only society tries to trick us. You need to get it. You need to know what you're talking about. You need to get this. And I believe that there's facts. And I believe that this word of God is true. And I believe that if God said he did it for me, I'm going to receive it. I ain't going to fight it. Because I know how it feels not to feel love. And I don't know about any of y'all, but I know how it feels not to feel love. I know how it feels not to feel like I have a friend or somebody I can count on or somebody I can talk to or somebody I can lean on. But God says, I love you, son. I love you, daughter. I gave my son for you so that we can be in communion with each other. Amen. And that love is so strong it becomes a part of your character when you embrace it. Amen. We must embrace that God loved us and he died for us. That word whosoever 
is a pivot point in that scripture. Mm -hmm. Because before, the Jews thought it was for them right. and them alone. But that word, whosoever, opened it up for everybody. Amen. He said, I'm about to flip the script. I'm changing the game. I'm about to just whoo, blow your minds with this thing. Whosoever. I want you to put that in the chat. Whosoever. Whosoever. This love we're talking about. Well, how I, I get that, I get that, but then that's all talk. What, what, what about what, what about the action? How do we know it happened? Romans 5 and 8. It says, but God clearly shows and proves his love for us by the fact that while we were sinners, still sinners, Christ died for us. The first scripture I read you, John 3:16. It's telling you what he's going to do. This scripture right here tells you what he did. Come on, come on. Mm -hmm. This is after the fact. And he's explaining to his children, a demonstration of my love is the fact that I died. And I did that just for you. And I didn't wait till you got right, till you fixed everything. See, in this thing, in this world we live in, people always think, oh, I gotta do this, I gotta do that in order for this to happen, I gotta do that and this in order for that to happen. And we got it all planned out. Yes. And we will waste our life thinking it has to happen the way we said it has to happen. But this love thing, Jesus said, I already did it. It's done. Just receive it. And I demonstrated it by not just talking about it. Mm -hmm. I actually did it. Yes. 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 And I love the fact that it says he demonstrates his love for us. It's very clear. I did it for you. Yes. I did it for you. I didn't do it for my own gain. I did it for you. I was already in deity. I was already up here. Dad and I, we were up here chilling. We were doing our thing. We were creating and doing all this stuff and, and blessing our people. And there was a discrepancy. Oops. Well, that's good. I had to come down and fix the discrepancy. Yes. 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 Amen. Because the enemy had my people thinking I didn't love them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Through my people. It'd be different if it was somebody who didn't relate to God at all and said he don't love you, but the actions of his own people, the Samaritans, fighting about where to worship. Jesus said, get a clue. It's not about where, it's about how. Yes. Hmm. Yes. I want that spirit in it. I don't care if you're in the temple. I don't care if you're under the bridge. I don't care where you at. How you worship. Mm -hmm. Yes. Come on, yeah. It's what matters, not where. See, this religion thing has really got us stuck. Yes. Yes. And God is saying, I came, I died, and I rose to break all that stuff down. Thank you, Jesus. And to let you know that I did it for you. I did it for you. Jesus. God, God's love said you were to die for him. His love said you were to die for him. We talked about that in John 3, 16. He took it a step further and he died for all of us. Romans 5 and 8. And this one right here is my favorite. Then he rose with all power in his hands so we can be free to love and be loved. Mm. It's not about what happened to us. Because everything happens to everybody. I mean, it may not happen the same way, but everybody goes through something. The Bible says the rain falls on the just and the unjust. So that means everybody can go through some trip. Things are going to happen to us that we don't think is fair. Whatever the case may be, we're not demeaning it. We're not saying it's not a big deal. What we're saying is it's not about what happened to us. It's about how we feel about what happened to us. Mm 
And God is saying, now you can feel freedom mm -hmm. because I died so that you can be free from that hurt, free from that pain, free. And that's the love that I have to give you. Right. Your only job is to receive it. You don't have to earn it. It's not something you have to pay a million dollars for. We're not going to put it out of your reach so that all these specific people can get it. He says, whosoever. So I have one question for you. How could you not love a God like that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's make it plain. He came down. He was betrayed by his own disciple. Worked miracles, signs and wonders. And then it came time for him to do what he came to do. Some of us don't know why we're born. We know we're existing. We're still trying to find out what it is that we're here on this earth for. That wasn't Jesus' story. Yeah. He was born to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, he didn't just die. Just nobody just shot him in the head. They didn't just hang him. They didn't do. He was crucified, mm -hmm. which even still to this day is the most excruciating death you can go through. And not just excruciating, but humiliating. So he, he got hit from all angles. And this is the craziest thing about it. That should have been us on that cross. Amen. He said, I'll die for the sins of the world. That's how much I love you. I will be the sacrificial lamb. I will stand in the gap. I will be crucified so that you won't have. I love you that much. I love you so much. Before they even crucify me, they're going to beat me to the point if I was a mortal man and I didn't have any God in me, I would be dead. Amen. Amen. And then, to caveat off that, that's where your healing comes from. I believe the yeah. Bible specifically says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and it's by his stripes that we were healed. Yes. Yes. Healed. Healing doesn't just happen when we're sick. Healing comes when we're bound up and we get free. Healing comes from when we're struggling and we can't see our way out and all of a sudden God was like, shh. Yes. Shh. <laughs> That's for me. That's for me because uh, that's for him. And then when he got down to the point where he couldn't move anymore, he said, uh, Come on, come on. Come on. Uh, mm -hmm. And the people that were beating him were tired. Oh, how in the world is this dude still here? We did less than somebody else and they died, but his love wouldn't let him die on the whipping post. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. His love said, no. no. I must endure this. Yes. 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 Love won't let me go. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. And he took it all. Yeah. And that wasn't enough. Mm. They still wanted them crucified. But even though people say, how can people do this to him? It was all a part of his plan that he set in motion. Yes. Amen. Because for some reason, we live in a show me state. God said, it's not good enough just for me to tell you I love you. Not with you guys. I got to show you. <laughs> I got to show you. And I know it's tight, but it's right. It's right. Because he said, they have to see a sign of my love for them. So, he was crucified. Spit on him. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Thorns on his head. They ridiculed him. They beat him. They abused him. They, they talked about him like he was a dog. And he did it all for us. 
Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. But on the third day, oh, okay. he said, I can't stop this here. Because here it won't be complete. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put in the chat, he got up. Uh, and I'm telling you right now, I feel the Holy Ghost so strong. He got up so you could get up. He got up so you can get up out of your depression. Yes. He got up so you can get up out of your anxiety. He got up so you can get up out of your sickness. He got up so you can get up out of your struggle. And just as he got up, the Bible says when he rose, we rose with him. And we're seated in heavenly places in the Lord. So he said, I'm not just going to command you to love. I'm going to show you how it's done. The epitome of love. If you look up love in a dictionary, you should, see, you should really see a picture of Jesus. Yeah. Because God is love. He is the demonstration of the manifestation of and he tells us that because I did what I did, I died and I rose again, I've given you the power to not just love, but to be loved. And I did all of this. All your job is, is to believe and receive. This isn't complicated. We're the ones that overcomplicate it. Well, I'm not ready for God yet. I gotta get right. God demonstrates his love for us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died. But no, no, no. He couldn't love me. No, no, no. Whosoever. Yes. Mm. Yes. Saints, I've been there before. I asked the question, how can anybody love me? And my grandma introduced me to a man named Jesus. Come on. And she said, he loves you so much, he died for you. And he rose again so that you can be free. The Bible says, if anyone be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things have become new. I want you to put in the chat, I knew because of love. I knew because of love. And I don't know about you, but just by the Holy Spirit giving me that much, I want to get to know him even more. Amen. Talking about this Jesus dude. How we love me. Wait a minute, let me get in this book. Uh, <clears throat> teaching book. Start at John. Then go back to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and read John again. Another teaching moment. Do not read it like it's a novel. Come on. Matter of fact, we'll do this together. This week, John 1. John 1? Oh my goodness, I can get done with it. This week. John 1. We're learning about Jesus. And I guarantee by the time you get done with chapter 4, you'll fall in love with him. Yes. You'll fall so deeply in love with him. Saints, we must learn to love God with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. That requires a relationship with him. And you can never develop a relationship with somebody that you don't know. Let's get to know Jesus. Let's get to know him. If you've never had an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we want to pray with you today. And we want to give you that chance. We want to present that opportunity to you. Because the Bible specifically says, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. 
and we want to get everybody the opportunity. Remember that word, whosoever. I don't care how you were raised, what you were raised in, what you used to believe. God been converting people since day one. And the Bible says the truth, you shall know it, and the truth will set you free. So let us pray. We're going to pray together, hallelujah, as a community. Bless God, because we're about lives changing. We're about people becoming new and getting saved. That's what we're about. Hooting and hollering is good, but it's about God and people getting saved. Yes. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father God, repeat after me. Father God, Father God I thank you, I thank you for, loving me, for loving me. Even when, even when I, didn't love myself. I didn't love myself. Lord, Lord I just want to get to know you better. I and I know that that starts with a relationship. So Lord, I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead for my salvation. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I may not know what that means, but I receive it on credit. In Jesus' name. Thank God, amen. amen. Give God praise today. Give God praise. Give Him glory. Give Him honor. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're focusing on the do's, y'all. Not the don'ts. We're focusing on the do's. And the one thing that God tells us, hallelujah, in the first part of this thing is to love, love, love. Amen? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's give God praise. It is an awesome opportunity when anybody can come to Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. Heaven is celebrating right now. Hallelujah. The devil is mad, but it's all right. He can be mad by himself. Hallelujah. Because we ain't worried about him. We're about giving God glory, honor, and praise. Amen? And building his kingdom. Hallelujah. If you said that prayer for the first time, we want you to go to the website. We want you to subscribe. And we want you to put in there, I got saved. And you can put the day's date if you want to, but we'll know when you put it in there that you got saved. Amen. And we want to make sure you put your email in there so we can get you a birth certificate. Because today is a joyous occasion. Hallelujah. This is what Jesus talked about when he said you must be born again. Amen. You were born again after you said that prayer. Hallelujah. And once again, if you said it for the first time, please go on to the website at ESCMTacoma.org. And we want to make sure that you guys have an opportunity to get your birth certificate. Put it on a frame. Put it in the wall. Amen. Sorry. Put it in the frame. Put it on the wall. Amen. Amen. I'm excited right now. I'm so excited. Amen. God is so good. Amen. Bless his name. Hallelujah. Ooh, it's offering time, saints. Right. Amen. I said it's offering time, saints. Right. Hallelujah. We don't have to. We get to give. Yes. Amen. We get to do it. Hallelujah. It is a commandment by God, but we don't want to look at it as something else. Oh, you better do this. No, we're happy. We're excited to get it. Why? Because God said he loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Amen. And if God said he loves something, I want to be what it is he says he loves. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to be a cheerful giver. So in my love to God, I become a cheerful giver. Amen? And some people may be struggling right now, but I'm telling you, God knows what you're working with. Amen? He knows what you're working with. So just trust in him. Trust him. Because any income that we get right now, or even before COVID, we got it because of him. Amen. It wasn't nothing that we did. The job, oh, I was good. I did this and I got this. No, no. Because there was other candidates that were good too. You got it because God, it, it's yours. What God has for you is yours. So we got to come to the understanding that God is our source. Not our jobs, not finances, not God is our source. Yes. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. And God said he'll bless the works of your hands. Hallelujah? Oh, yes. He will your hands to do. Hallelujah. We thank you. Let us pray. Father God, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to give, God, because that's what it is, Lord. Father God, everybody that has given, Father God, and, has, and maybe this might be somebody's first time giving, Father God, we thank you for that opportunity to do so, Lord God. Hallelujah. If you have not given before, we want to make sure that you know how to do it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I appreciate it. We want to make sure you know how to do it. So there's two ways we can give online. Okay. The first one, you can go to our website at www.escmtacoma.org. Okay. And you can hit the give button and you can be taken to a secure payment gateway called Push Pay. 
All right. Once in there, you can say, okay, I want to give reoccurringly, or you can give one time. Okay, so we want to make sure that you have that opportunity to give. Amen. There's another way for the texters that don't like to go online, but they like to send texts. We want to make sure that you're able to do that as, as well. You can text the word ESCM to 77977. And you'll also be given a link and you click the link and you'll be taken to push pay as well, which is our secure payment gateway. And you can do exactly what we talked about before. You need to give a reoccurring giving statement or giving donation or you can give a one time, okay? So we thank you for all of our donors, all of our givers. We couldn't do what we do without you. Amen. And we want to let you know that we appreciate you. Everybody, Father, oh yes, it doesn't matter the amount. We don't, we, that's not, that's up to you and God. It's, it's not, a, it's, that's not about us. But we thank you for every dime that's given. Amen. Everything, hallelujah. Because we're able to do what we do. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, bless the Lord, hallelujah. Now that we know how to give, and now that we've given, let us pray. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give because that's what it is, Lord. Lord, we pray, Lord God, for a press town shaking together and running over blessing, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the tithers right now, Lord God. I mean, Father, we ask you to bless their sacrifice, Father God, because sometimes, even in times like this, it may be difficult, Lord, but we're relying on faith and trust in you, Father God, to be obedient to your word, Lord. So in our obedience, Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you're opening up the windows of heaven and you're pouring us out such blessings that we will not have room enough to receive, Lord God. We also thank you that you're stopping the devil from messing with us, Lord. God, messing with our homes, messing with our money, messing with anything, Father God, that you got going. We thank you, Father, because you said what the enemy meant for bad, you turn it around and you make it good. And we thank you, Lord God, that you're turning everything around, hallelujah. Ooh, yes, Lord Jesus, for us even now. We thank you, Father God, Lord, for the people that are giving offering and sowing seed, Father God. We ask you to bless them, Father God, 30, 60, and 100 fold. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God. Lord God, that for the press down, shaking together and running over blessings, Father God. Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, because from this seed we will reap a harvest, Father God. And we thank you, Lord God, ooh, for the return on our investment, Lord God. Lord, the, the kingdom of God is the greatest investment that we can ever make. And we thank you for the opportunity to do so, Lord God. I mean, Father, we pray for every business, Father God, in the room, Father God, and online, Father God, watching, Lord God. Every business is a part of the prayer room, brother, Father God. We thank you for expanding our borders, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for clients coming to us, and we won't have to go to them, Father God. We thank you for revelation on how to prosper our businesses, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, because we know wisdom comes from God. So, Lord God, speak to our hearts, Lord God, and we will do as you say, Father God, because you said in your word, Lord God, that you will bless the works of our hands. Yes. And whatever we set our hands to do will be blessed. So right now, Father God, every endeavor that we're making, we thank you that you're prospering. You're exceeding expectations. Hallelujah. You're blowing our minds, Lord God, with your goodness and mercy and grace, Father God. Thank you for favor with clients, Lord God. Thank you for favor with people, Lord God. You said, Lord God, our gift would make room for us, and you would give us favor with God and man. We appreciate you, Lord. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God, amen. Let's give God praise, hallelujah. Let's give God praise, hallelujah, because we got an expected end on this seed, hallelujah. We sown in the best ground that it could ever be sown, and that's the kingdom of God. Amen. We want to thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord, for inviting us in your home. Hallelujah. We could have church together. Amen. We hope you were blessed today, and we hope to see you next time, next Sunday at 11 30. Once again, thank you again for joining us. Okay. May God bless you. May God keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God, amen.